Well, thank you so much, our viewers, for watching UBC. And good morning, Uganda. Now, it is a time where we do take you into uh, Good Morning Uganda agenda. But I must also remind our viewers that you can be a part of this conversation where you will have a chance to call in and make contributions or perhaps ask any question related to our topic of discussion. Now, today we'll be looking at national building and political settlement. Now, we must also realize that in a wake of a political uh, what we call political fusion and as we head towards 2021 where the country will decide uh, its leadership at all different levels. We must also create a level of sanity into our people to understand the most honest relevancy of leadership but by far with a shared vision of this country. Now in studio with me to discuss this is my uh, colleague that is a Peace Ambassador Milton Kambura. Sebo, you're welcome. Oh, thank you. Good morning, brother. Good morning, my brother. Oh, How are good you? Good morning, brother, today. It's good to see you. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity once again. It's been and a long uh, time. Where have you been? I've been in the region, um, South Sudan, and the issues in DRC. We are very happy to report to you uh, that DRC is about to become a member of the East African community. We have also been uh, in South Korea again, and uh, um, also in the United States where we plan to host um, the International Young Leaders Assembly next month, uh -huh. bringing young professionals around the globe to share uh, the youth challenges uh, in their nations and how to unlock their potential to develop their communities. Okay. Uh, just something now far from that, you do realize that the Uganda Kingdom is celebrating 26 years of coronation of His Highness, the King of Uganda, wow. Ronald Mwenda Mutevi. Uh, I, I, you must have lived enough to see Uganda go through these transitions. Oh, Aren't yes. you excited? Yeah, uh, of course. On behalf of the yes. people of Uganda. Yes. Because you stay here. Uganda, yes, they have taken care of us. You know, Uganda Thank has you. taken care of us. Thank and you I congratulate for, for that uh, comment. His Royal Highness, uh, the King, the Kabaka. Uh, thank you for your leadership. And of course, uh, Uganda I I is where the name Uganda came from. So there are values. We must acknowledge. You know, we acknowledge and appreciate. Surely, surely. Yes. And of course, we do congratulate uh, the people of Uganda and the king himself for these at least 26 years mm. seated on the throne and leading the people of Uganda and by far all people who stay and live and subscribe to his leadership. Uh, Kambura will be looking at national building. This is a very sensitive topic for most of the people in mm -hmm. this country, even mm -hmm. outside countries. Most of the grappling countries, mm -hmm. and as you did mention, like mm -hmm. South Sudan, Congo, uh, we have seen Eritrea, mm -hmm. even Ethiopia, we have seen Niger. They're still grappling with challenges of national building mm -hmm. and political settlement. Mm -hmm. What are the determinant factors of national building and political settlement, if you may look at them? Wow, um, uh, you know, it's a sweet, uh, sweet subject, but it requires uh, technical people uh, and people who have really seen, uh, who have, the, especially the young people. Mm -hmm. we d now we have new definitions of these things, you know. Um, I, I, I really believe um, nation building um, uh, focuses at bringing all people together towards developing their nations, you know, improving their livelihood in a nation. I, I, that consensus building is what nations like uh, USA did 100 years ago. Before all these achievements, they had to agree on certain fundamentals. And it's the local people, you and me, who came to that round table to define the USA of that time, o o of how they want to seed 200 years from that time. So they have been really uh, doing that, and the, the first generation died. They, then the second generation came and inherited those values, the things I'm going to talk about, and that's why USA became a powerful nation. I think some of you remember that the United States did not participate fully in the First World War uh, because they were busy building their own nation. The Second World War, when it came, um, USA was not, you know, it, it, was, it was busy building infrastructure, education, building its fundamentals in technology. They were busy, and they said, oh, no, no, I think we are not ready 
to, to, to be part of colonialism. You remember the British were here, the Germans, even Portugal. Portugal colonized even uh, 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 Brazil, you, you remember? A weak nation, Portugal had to go conquer because it was the, 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 who can manage, even Uganda. If Uganda was also strong, would also conquer maybe Europe or maybe London, but it was a war of the strong eating the weak and looking for raw materials to fix their industrial agenda. Um, so this explanation, I'm trying to define what nation building is all about. It's all about people coming together to say, I think, um, to help the people who will come after us. They must find a foundation. That is what we want. Africa has never done that. When uh, Obote and his team, of th those former presidents were here, uh, even when we got our independence, there were jubilation. But they did not sit down, colleagues, to say, what type of education do you want? What type of roads do you want? What type of value system do they just, they were very happy uh, and, and they said, but the, the, the Muzungu left the, the borders of Uganda, but we inherited a certain co the colonial systems. Mm -hmm. So nation building is all about allowing people of a country, of communities coming together to define what n type of nation they wish to have uh, uh, in their time or in the time after them. Kambora, so do we see this uh, as possible with the problems that Africa has faced. Because we seem to mm. look at, uh, let everyone play their part. Yes. We shall get there <laughs> sometime. It's not what yes. should we all look at. We yes. do not have a shared vision. Yes. And when you find weaknesses along the way, we say, this is the road to development. Yes. So yes. are we having the right, uh, the right rules of the game? Um, what I can say after that definition, I want to share with you that yes, we can do whatever we are doing right now mm -hmm. and think we are moving, mm -hmm. others will point fingers, mm -hmm. but until we have th the shared vision, the power of a shared vision, because as we are playing our football, what are the rules of the game? So we must first define collectively, not that NRM or DP or uh, maybe one religious institution de develops this national vision. Who we are talking about a, a national vision. vision which should be the benchmark upon which a nation's development is directed. Who should spearhead this, Kambura? All cross-sector leaders must... It's exactly. Yes. But you see, we must pick from something. Yes. Uh, the purpose of leadership mm. is to lead... Mm. is to share this vision. Because mm. if that was not the case, we would not even be caring about leadership anyway. Yes. But if we don't have reasonable leadership, mm. okay, we may not see a shared vision. Yes. And who should do this? The people who should share the vision, are they doing it? Uh, you can imagine from 1962 to 1986, th those years, we are spent zero. Everyone would come, lead in his own formula, and now the role of a head of state and his government that people have entrusted is supposed to work with the faith institutions, the local leadership, the local people, I mean local people, the women, the youth, and build consensus on what type of vision they want to jointly implement. Upon which the government, an elected government, is measured and assessed on how it is delivering the vision. Every five years, how are we implementing the vision? And how, which percentage are we achieving towards that? That has not happened uh, here. As yet. a country, uh, is, we do not have a shared vision as per now? Yes. We don't have a shared vision because when you see a fragmented society where political parties, for example, are not even believing in the vision the president of Uganda has put forward with his government. That also makes it sense. simply means mm. we, everyone is isolated from one another. The, question the faith be. institutions are also not... Maybe, Kambura, just to get yes. you properly. Yes. How do we arrive at a shared vision? Correct. And how do we come to this word, shared yes. vision? Identifying, for example, wh those of you who read the Bible and the Quran mm -hmm. will remember that Moses was given 
the mandate to go and liberate the children mm. of God in from Egypt. Yes, which was to, which was godly. Yes, it, we will read it was, there. It was I, a divine exactly, vision. Exactly. Now I'm using that divine vision mm. to share with you that this man had to spend quite some time going to share with the people, yeah. the Israelites who were in slavery in Egypt, teaching them what God had told him. And say, we are, not, we are not part of this society. We go to work towards going back to our promised land. He had to convince each one of them to make sure they leave everything they are doing in Egypt. Yeah. Those, were, those that were suffering and those that were in comfort zone. To leave everything and now risk to even go to a destination. The processes were not known because the local people did not understand that miracles would be done on the way. But they had to believe in the vision Moses had introduced, shared with them, and they had to start a journey, no matter the possible challenges on the way. Of now, course, had resistance as e well. Exactly, there was so resistance. So that means that vision you're talking about yes. wasn't a shared vision. No, because no, no, no. if it was a shared vision, yes. you wouldn't have people who are resisting the shared vision. I would equate that to Uganda, that from, nine, uh, from 1886, five years back, we had a Moses who went with a vision, among others, <laughs> and they equally did the same. Y so, yes. we have a shared vision. Now, you know, a shared vision, we can't say a shared vision, when the majority of the people... Are, have, are still having their small, small visions which are not integrated in the bigger vision. So who we should got have the bigger vision? vision? Then, okay, who should have a bigger vision is that your the vision, bigger. my vision, your vision, we integrate that one vision and it becomes a national vision. Okay, now, and that has been the challenge for us. In that country. has been a key challenge of this country whereby everyone thinks they have their own vision, every political part. That's why I see in the 21st century, all, why can't all schools in Uganda have one educational vision? So we are looking at how the whole country can be measured on how everyone, every sector is uh, implementing the national vision. Kambura, it, let's yes. get you right in some yes. of the things you're yes. saying here. Yes. You're talking of a shared vision. Yes. Which Uganda has not achieved so far. Yes. As a sh shared vision. Yes. But you're seeming more of uh, theoretical than practical. I am. If you talk about uh, political players having a similar vision, how realistic is this? Yes, we can have what we call institutional visions, mm -hmm. but all, all feeding in the major, broader national vision. Mm. And what I'm talking about here is that time has come the when the local the people, mm. exactly, the local people need to be educated on what each one of us, each one of us is fighting for. For example, I'm saying mm -hmm. prosperity, maybe in mm. the next 100 or 200, a vision is not just 20 years from now. Mm. A vision, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 even 100, because a, what, we can't achieve that bigger vision right now. All others are small, small visions. Feeding in a bigger vision. Which we don't have. We, we, now, everyone seems to be having a vision of achieving a border border. Having a meal on the table. Th th those are small, small visions. But a nation intending to become the hub of, of the whole world in terms of peace and prosperity. Mm -hmm. To become the superpower. To become the center of peace in Africa. We got to have a broader best vision, which is actually spiritual, that unites all our people towards uh, realizing that, hey, we are one family under God. It can be a spiritual vision. Okay. That so we are one family under God. To end identity-based conflict, to end isolation, to end poverty, to end wars, to uh, one vision, to see how Uganda, for example, can become the center of excellency. Whereby, because we have everything, we have raw materials, we have rich cultures, we have everything. But then it goes beyond, because the vision alone cannot drive a nation. Okay. Because there are others, a shared vision will be now achieved through a shared value system. Okay, now oh, let's talk wow, about the that. That is a good one. Now, we, when you have a broader based vision, for example, um, a, a Uganda are realizing that we are one family under God, or um, Uganda, uh, a, a peaceful and prosperous Uganda. Mm? That can be a broader. Mm. Now, there are those values that 
people need to demonstrate on daily basis, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. for, to, for example? For example, the value of, um, of, honesty. of honesty and integrity, ethics. Mm -hmm. Today in the papers, me and Robert were yes. reading a couple of baseling stories. Mm -hmm. And we do read those stories on yes, daily. every day. And that worries us. We cannot achieve, therefore, as you are uh, now, it is good you are giving a testimony. We cannot achieve a national vision, that broader best national vision. Actually, that is the role of the president. The, not, the president is supposed to spend all his time just going to community to teach to inspire these people mm -hmm. on a broader best vision. Because mm -hmm. the vision changes the, the, the whole game. Mm -hmm. It builds the economy, because it is us. We have now, a vision which is prosperity for all. OK, if it is prosperity so for what all. What now, we so need to, now? To achieve that prosperity for all, you need now to, to inculcate, cultivate, integrate ethics in the people. Because while others are stealing and putting their pockets, others are you, cannot drive, also. you cannot develop that road. While others are, are, are frustrating the ethics of the nation, patriotism will not be realized. That's true. And these are the cornerstones which are scientific. They call them soft touch, which builds economies. Mm -hmm. You cannot talk about economy when your people are corrupt. That one is a dead deal. You cannot go all over the country donating money and you think people will prosper without ethics. Let me just give you an example. When you talk about ethics, and for us, it's, mm. and for me, I will not even say, for, for me, it is very mm. painful that it is in countries like Uganda, yes. where we see that uh, wealth, the wealthy people take about 70% of the wealth in this country mm. is only, and or it is only belonging to 5% of Ugandans. Mm. What an economy. That's why the, 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 you see what we call a vision it is, is it, it transcends all barriers of of, exactly. of, of, of all society. those of society yes. in terms of of seeing each other's eco partners when others are poor yeah. and others are rich the in, the gap of in of the rich and the, the poor mm -hmm. is uh, the vision must break that in by fact, making sure people have a where there's sharing. a vision mm. people it should disturb yes. the leaders that yes. people are poor yet they are rich that mm. must now end the leader those, those, those are the values uh, yes. those are the, the values. values that the, will yes. make the vision happen exactly because mm. the values help you now to realize the vision it unites the whole country it defines who those people are. They, it develops the character and it motivates people to wake up every day and work together. It breaks the barriers of identity-based conflict. Whereas we need everyone, the Baganda have a, a talent, the Basog a different talent, the Bakonjo, where I come from, a different talent, the people from the north uh, have a different... We need each other's talent. And so the moment we unite uh, ourselves towards a shared uh, a value system of integrity, mm -hmm. patriotism, compassion, kindness, you know, living for the sake of others, living for the greater good, mm -hmm. those are fundamental teamwork. You know, teamwork is very great. How do days. we, uh, Kambura, how do we originate these values? Because they seem long gone. Yes. Were they there? <laughs> You know, I like no. your question, and I like your question. Mm -hmm. But the, the, I said, want to believe that uh, when we look at, for example... The only evidence we have mm -hmm. of such, Robert, would be in what you call cultural setups. Mm -hmm. Yes. That previously in kingdoms, and this is why we are so proud of mm -hmm. our fallbacks, which would be cultures, the cultural establishments. You go to the Banyoro. Mm -hmm. They had that trust. They had the belief. They had the shared vision. They had shared values. Mm -hmm. When you go to the Acholi, you go to the Basoga, come to Uganda, mm. they have shared values. Mm. Those are shared values at cultural level. Do we see this at national level? Have we been ever? He has just told you 62 up till 86, wasted time. But even the aftermath of 86, mm. we are seeing. A, a cross of some of those misleading values. Now, the fact is, people seem to be working for money. Uh -huh. money is there anything is, wrong with that? There's no problem. Working for money is not a problem. But I want to see how this country can be motivated to work for bigger goals than money. Because I want to tell our citizens today, yes, you're working for money. But I want to guarantee you, 
that the moment you die tomorrow, you have left billions of money or, or value in your buildings. Before you even wrote in the coffin, children whom, who are lacking values will sell your properties at a half price. It simply means know where to put your priority to. Nurturing values in your children. Because that is the, the most expensive wealth Uganda has. Not the money. Money perishes. Values it does not. Values is what Uganda needs. And so the moment you have a population that don't have values, tomorrow we are going back to the bush. What should Wars, be done? conflicts. Okay. What should be now. done in terms of values? Yes, we can build roads, but when people lack values, they will destroy the road. How they will never appreciate your league. How do we get to that now, point? You have, he talked about a good point. The, who plays what role there? It will come in the, in the, in the, second, in the second segment. Okay. The now, faith leaders, the role of cultural leaders, the role of, gov of government, the role of parents, family institutions, the role of education institutions. That would be the basis of our education in terms of in schools, in oh. the family institution, turning the family into also a school faculty. Making sure, so values must be anchored in every ministry. We are talking about values cultivated even in toilets, okay. written in toilets, written at the airport, written, to define who Ugandans are. Because our future is not in, 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 in the budget. All right. Our future is in the values Ugandans must demonstrate. Okay, now I must remind our viewers that we will be able to take in your call so you can be a part of this very great conversation. And please call on to the lines that will be running down your screen. And uh, for some of you who want to call, our number is 0702-2324-25. Call in to give us your comment or your contribution, perhaps your question. And now, Kambura, we're looking at the different um, outlines. Yes. But let us now look at the principles. Uh -huh. Now, my brother, I want to tell you that to achieve the national vision, I, I really like UBC mm. because it brings practical and scientific um, opportunities okay. of people, scholars, to come and share this. I, I have not seen this on other televisions. Thank you. And, and I thank you because th this does not happen elsewhere. Uh, you know, as much as you... Be Maybe be can you begin by defining what... Actually, actually let us first take the scholar. Yes. Uh, I think we lost the caller, but, but, but yeah, it's okay. But Kambura is talking about the principle. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. we have uh, the shared vision, uh, yeah. then we got values. values. Now, yes. now we need you to define first what are principles that we're talking about. And how here. they fit into our shared vision. Those of you listening to us today are really picking something. And please, if you have a paper, you have a book somewhere, write something, write something. Now, to deliver the national vision, even your vision at home, because as we are talking about a national vision, to ascend it, please also it condense it, down. also comes to you where you belong. You need the principles, shared principles. Ugandans or Africans, for that matter, to realize the integration of the African continent, we need to develop shared principles. What do I mean? That even though you belong to any political party, I belong to another political party or another political party. Okay, let, let, let us just take uh, this call, uh, Milton, briefly. Hello? Hello. Hello, please. Can you tell Hello. us your name and where you're calling from? Oh, sorry. We lost uh, the caller. Network. Yes, please. Uh, we need to have shared principles that no matter why, wherever we are, in our religious backgrounds, in our political parties, you know, we, ha we must have pr the rules of the game. I mean that we must build the consensus on the things we must never destroy. For example, that this country will never go for war any again. That, would that be is a, a principle, principle, a national principle. That no matter what comes or rain or shine, we must never go back to war. We must always uh, agree. We must always... Oh, sorry. Sorry for that caller. Uh, I think it's because of network probably. problem, probably. What, anyway. I'm, what I'm saying is that we must agree on certain principles which are anchored in the Constitution. Our Constitution in the preamble has gotten some of these objectives. But Ugandans don't know them. That's why they jump in development priorities and even criticize where it is not necessary, where they build their institutions or to, fight, to only fight. 
even where government, you know, everyone is, it seems to not align to the national principles. Okay. That we will never call ourselves names that go Gwara. That we will never isolate each other on the basis of tribalism. You, you, those are principles. Mm. That we will never divide ourselves and go into civil war. No. What happened in, in Rwanda? We have seen enough. And so as a country, we must define our, our shared principles. Okay. Upon which our politics will be anchored to play properly and in a peaceful way. But do FDC, for example, DP, NRM, and maybe all these players, even faith institutions, the family, do we know national, these shared principles? Okay, let us take out this caller, Milton, briefly. Hello? 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 I think, I think we do have a problem uh, there, but uh, of course, keep calling in. Uh, so we can have you be a part of our discussion. And the number for you to call in is 0702-2324-25. When you do call, please step away from your TV set or reduce the volume of your TV. Yes. And, and another principle to even dissect the operations and the, the activities of other stakeholders. Like, for example, you have um, a political parties, national code of conduct instrument to manage the leadership of political parties. We have the cultural institutions integrated in the, in the constitution. What, 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 which rules of the game do they have? Are you just going to stop the Kabaka from uh, moving around the country or put laws that are, uh, that are stopping them from operating? You are stopping them from operating because they need rules of the game. Because they can divert the population from one point A to point X. So as a nation, <laughs> this way it gets really sour. And I think our development experts need to listen to this. We need to first prioritize that a nation like Uganda now, which is at the takeoff, requires a, a, a shared vision laid down a shared value system laid down, shared principles guiding the activities of the different stakeholders and including the youth, including the, the priests, the sheikhs, everybody, or even the media. Because without shared principles, you cannot achieve the national vision. Because okay. everyone will be in a, in a divergent direction. Yeah, and, the cost, a, and the constitution, even the courts of law, will have what we call a lacuna. Why, why are we charging people? Okay, you don't steal. Okay, they say don't steal. If I, uh, for why? Why should I not steal? There must be laid down principles which are constitutional in nature that above everything, that's why I, I like the laws of the United States. The way they judge you, they say, according to the dream of the America people. Th that, that is the one they developed a hundred years ago. This and this will not be done in the sake, for the sake of peace, for the sake of the values of... They, they even read, the judge reads it there. Here, here you are just urinating in your parts. So there must so be these the fundamentals and now maybe probably we can go to, mo to the more leadership. Moral, morals and innovation. Uh, moral yes. and innovative leadership. To deliver anything, you need leadership, my colleague. Whether you're a mother in your home, whether you, 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 you're a father in your home, whether you're a child in the home, whether you're LOC1, everyone, whether you're a minister, a PS, I'm talking about a permanent secretary in the ministry, we need moral and innovative leadership. For us what to is morality? Yes, morality is, of course, um, ethical upheld values of society. If we uphold those values, th that is morality. So but in the absence uh, of common values, mm -hmm. do we have morality? We cannot have. We cannot have, look at this, we need moral and innovative leadership to deliver the vision. <laughs> I don't know, to deliver the national development agenda. Because without leadership, you cannot deliver public service. But how do you deliver public service when you have corrupt civil servants? Therefore, we need to nurture and inculcate moral and innovative leadership in all the drivers and the, all the influencers of the, all sectors of the economy. Not just the political parties, of course, we are talking about political party leaders, uh, but also in the church. 
the church is also an influence of society. So we need pastors to also mm -hmm. de de demonstrate moral and innovative leadership. Uh -huh. But two words is achieving a national vision, not just the moral and innovative leadership. For what? Tambor. To deliver uh -huh. the people of Israel from Egypt uh -huh. to Canaan. At That's what, what point I, are we? Because when we look at shared vision, we don't have shared values, we don't have <laughs> principles, we don't have aspiration, moral and innovative leadership. Wow, wow, we wow. Have. Now the, 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 the problem is, when the Banyoro, he talked about the Banyoro, I am a Mukonjo from of Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, the Waganda, the, 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 the Kabako of Uganda and his kingdom, every cultural system is promoting isolated values. Remember, they also have values, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, the problem comes in when every Ugandan has their own values. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone is, is leading a, a certain value system. Others are saying circumcise women. Others say no. Others are, they, they bend through this side. Others. So you have a confused country. That's why when you go to developed countries, they have killed what we call isolation, isolated value system because they don't unite the nation. As much as you are doing something good, but according to my culture, then this one, everyone. So you cannot lead a nation which is polarized with such a kind of different isolated value system. That's why we need what that word called a shared national value system. The values of the country must, and all these cultural kings and whatever, they must fit in, 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 that, in that bracket because the, cali the values are this, the same. If you take at this isolation, yes. that some define we are. Yes. As a who? As a Ugandan or, or as your tribe? As those particular tribes. Exactly. What is the big picture for, for nation building? What is key? Can you work with our differences, our diversity, uh, uh, to fit into a national vision? Okay, I am not saying forget about your cultural institution. Mm -hmm. The values remain a global ethical framework. Don't kill. Be peaceful. Ethics. Mm -hmm. Be hon They are the same. Mm -hmm. But then we add in other things which actually become dest destructive to national development. Okay. Like, 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 like genital metal, like circumcising women. It's a, hum it's a human rights abuse. True. There are these things who have been calling our, our cultural value, but they are keeping your people into bondage because we are in the 21st century. We are digitalization in some communities. Are, they, they are even repelling digitalization. They're saying this is not part of our culture. Immunization. Can you imagine? Immunization. Others are saying immunization is not good. So we got to now to think as a nation mm -hmm. and say what should we remove, what should we add. Now, yeah. when you say we don't have, I get scared. Because now it is time for us to be focused and lesser focused. Otherwise, we are going to again remain the same, Let's disorganize it, and not going anywhere. Let's and look we think at we are constitutionalism, uh, Milton. Yes. How does constitutionalism also play a role in the bid for us to see a better country? Very, very, very good. Now your question is very nice. And remember, your viewers, I want to let you know that a moral leader is a person who is influenced and controlled by ethical principles. I think they have gotten that. An innovative leader is a leader who will do everything possible to bring all his people together, to work together, to love one another towards achieving a certain development priority, uh -huh. using innovative methodologies to break barriers of conflict. For example, organizing sports for peace, planting trees, uniting them toward the circles, you know, an innovative leader. That's uh, in the 21st century. It is no longer just a leader, leader. It is moral and innovative leadership. Now, constitutionalism. For us to achieve peace and development, we need to anchor our consensus, what we have agreed upon as a nation, the rules of the game, in a book called a constitution. But the question comes, do the citizens of Uganda, the owners of Uganda, know these rules of the game? Because they are the ones who have come together, isn't it? They have said the do's, the don'ts, the do's and don'ts. But the moment you put that constitution in a foreign language, then it becomes only your rules for the educated. I, I don't know whether I'm talking to a nation today. And UBC has given me an opportunity to talk to you. 
And if you're a leader, please let us go very fast and translate the national constitution in all languages so that people know the do's and the don'ts. This was consensus because they are the ones who actually mm -hmm. brought forward these things that you are talking about in the constitution. So people must know the do's and the don'ts so that we deliver the national vision, okay. so that we deliver the national development plan. And then probably um, uh, allow building institutions mm -hmm. to actually deliver these factors. Mm -hmm. If you are head of state, like my friend, His Excellency, a uh, kid of South Sudan, you realize a nation like that is prone to conflict because there are no institutions. After capturing power, everyone started, now what do I take home? What is my position? And then it, 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 it actually limits a takeoff of a nation like that. So you, uh, you have to build institutions to deliver the shared vision, mm -hmm. to deliver the shared principles, to deliver the shared values, to deliver the economy that you want, to deliver the democracy, and, and all these kinds. But there must be a foundation to yes. everything you're talking yes. about. Yes. The question I have for you, that all that you've talked about, mm. have we set these foundations, or we are having something parallel? We were supposed to do this in 1986. We were, what we could do was to lay what we call the 10-point program okay. for His Excellency the President. Okay. And indeed it worked. Because not like uh, in South Sudan where after liberating this country, uh, Mashar is saying I have to be this, Kiri is saying I must be this, I think I should be the one owning the, uh, controlling the oil, I must be the one owning the security. His Excellency the President was innovative enough to say, I think we must unite this whole country toward the 10-point program. That was excellent. And I salute you, sir. And he had to put forward what we call the, L the RRC, Resistance Council system, the leadership. Mm. He has been doing that. Mm. Now the problem comes in where the new, uh, the, the new people, the new systems mm. uh, coming in and capturing that foundation. Now we ha that's why he's saying Kaukumi every day. He can't talk a hundred words without talking about Kaukumi. The Kaukumi people have now come to capture his vision, to okay. capture all these good things. Now and so he has to go back and revive the, that system. Th those patriotic citizens who were born on the, on the way, you remember the Muchaka Muchaka program, which was a nurturing moral and innovative leadership. Patriotism, common shared values, mm -hmm. and so because they lacked education, we thought they are not, uh, they are not, they are not having enough capacity to be in the parliament. Mm -hmm. We forgot them. The moment we forgot them, we got the kaukumi of the 21st century. Okay, now because you can be educated, but you, you are surely, corrupt. Surely, mm -hmm. this is the problem we are in mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. One of the things that is most important, having looked at all these challenges, mm -hmm. I want us, I want actually us to help our viewers mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm the threats to national building, it's important. Because if we know the threats, if we know the possible stampedes, mm -hmm. we will be able mm -hmm. to avoid them, to work upon them so we can see ourselves in a better country that mm -hmm. we want to live in, and our children, and later on our grandchildren. What are some of the threats, and how do we go around them? Wow, 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 wow. This is very, um, it's a, a very, it's a very hard question. But uh, to me, it's a very easy question. Because this is what w we go through all the time. We have read books and books. And one of the books that I read recently was the book called Think Big. Um, this man r wrote this book by, uh, by Matthias Peter. Okay. And he's trying to say, when you think big, you achieve big. This is, this is something that um, actually uh, is, is going to help me answer your question. Okay. The threat of the, 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 the new political system, for example, I will use that example. That's okay. The new political system. As much as we are talking about nation building, but then we have our friends who have come in with the new frameworks, and they are dictating, some of these guys dictate, some of these systems dictate on, on what you must do at what time. And so it has diverted us from the core uh, business of, of taking this country to achieve a certain, um, a certain vision. One of them is probably uh, the, the political dispensation mm -hmm. which we are in, the multi-party politics of Uganda, of the whole world. Mm -hmm. From a movement political system, you remember that? All mm -hmm. of us were in that movement. Mm -hmm. 
who were only uh, voting for a president due, uh, based on his competence or her competence. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Mm. That was terminated down. Now it's all about which political party mm. and, 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 and for you know, a political party. Whether you are stupid or, or you are competent, so long as you, in, uh, you, you are having a, a, a signal that I am here, I'm the one representing this political party. The issue of competence of who you are or how you educated, the experience you have, the sacrifices you have made, it no longer matter. Don't you think, um, that, uh, that, just uh, to interject at that, yes. don't you think it's us yes. sometimes who do not get these things right yes. as they should be? For example, the example you've given of political parties. Mm. Each political party is supposed to bring the best, the cream it has, to as a party flag bearer. But what happens if in political parties people can buy their way to the party ticket? That is where we go wrong. That because we copy certain things and we, and we do them without shared values, without shared principles, uh, that is where we go wrong. But I don't think there's a problem with some of these things we just copy. Yeah, you, you, I wouldn't you, say any problem yeah, you are with right. multiple dispensation. Y you are right. If you know the rules of the game and we are very Exactly. Principled. If at all we had the rules of the game, we appreciate the, the shared vision, mm -hmm. values, principles, aspirations, more and innovative leadership and putting the constitution now all these things the rules of the game in the constitution that wouldn't be a problem mm -hmm. but the problem is is where political parties mm -hmm. are not making accountability to the local people mm -hmm. because some of the political parties in africa are also influenced by international frameworks the inspirations of these political parties may not be that no, not all of them, I can't generalize all of them, but some of their inspirations are not the inspirations of the local Ugandans. Mm -hmm. You must know that. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm trying to mean here is that the moment, because we are talking about threats, and threats, and political systems, political systems, and political parties for that matter, exactly. Where you are allowing, for example, a few people to vote, for example, there are some countries where just a few rich people vote for the president. It's not like here where you in Uganda where everyone votes. Mm -hmm. Then you, you, such a system cannot allow people to, 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 to actually participate in nation building. Mm -hmm. In some countries, cities, a Lord Mayor, like uh, Lukwago, is not voted by all Uganda, all these people in the city. No, it is only the people who have buildings and plots and businesses to vote a Lord Mayor. And I'll I, see that right. I, 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 no, you are saying it is right. But, I'll see that right. but in know? some Easter sense, I, I am saying some of these are threats to nation building. Uh -huh. Because as much as you have a building in the city, but who is renting your building? Uh -huh. Is a young man from Rukunjiri who is paying rent to you. Uh -huh. So I mean, th these systems may be good or bad in some ways, depending on the expressions of a nation. But to Africa, the continent, I mean political systems have also become threats to delivering a national vision. So because when people are not sharing a common shared vision, political parties will, not, uh, will be useless. Because everyone will have his own vision, her own vision. You don't have the rules of the game. You don't have, you, you, so everyone is looking at taking a nation to a different road. So you don't have consensus. That culture of dialogue, therefore, must be brought back. Where Besige and his colleagues with the President Museveni come to a round table and say, what type of a nation do we envision to our children to see 600 years from now? Then they build principle, they build shared values, they build shared vision, principles, and all of them now go back to their offices towards now achieving that. The formula of achieving that may be different. The FDC may say, uh, we, for us we will pass through Masaka to achieve our final destination, X. Then NRM comes and says, for us we will present the following models. To achieve XX, we may pass ginger, but our final destination, then the Ugandans vote based on how these players are convincing them to achieve the national vision, the national value system, the, the, those bigger macro things. Okay. Now Hello. Let, let us just take our caller. Hello. Hello. Yes, please, kindly tell us your name and where you're calling from. I'm Charlie Gonza John from Mataka. Yes, Charlie Gonza John. Yes, me I would just love to appreciate Mr. Kambula Milton. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, much for the I wish Thank you, you hope that people to change the mindset of Ugandans. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Because what is delaying our Uganda back or why we are not building the nation further? Because the mindset of Ugandans are, you know, they are not in the right mind. So thank you for the show. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Ali Gonza from Masaka. He was appreciating uh, the topic and, of course, uh, the discussant that is uh, Peace Ambassador Milton Kambura. Milton, I want us to look at the aspect of corruption as we're looking at some of the challenges to uh, shared vision, uh, or perhaps national building for that matter. Corruption. And because <laughs> this one touches <laughs> us <laughs> directly as a country. Oh, my God. Where do you say corruption? I, I get fever, you know, I get fever immediately. Um, corruption, he has now, you can imagine. Hello? Yes, hello. hello, just a moment. Hello, caller. Hello. Yes, hello. Can you tell us your name and where you're calling from? Yes, my name is Isaac. Yes, Mr. Isaac. Where are you calling yeah. from, Sibyl? Um, um. Hello, um, Isaac. Hello, and I'm calling from Muja. Uh, Yes, Isaac, please. Are your question or your contribution? Yeah, first and foremost, I want to appreciate my friend, uh, Ambassador Milton. Thank you. Uh, for that good presentation together with you, uh, Thank you. the host for the show. Thank you. Um, and uh, I just wanted to say something small about what I just mentioned. Please. Uh, concerning um, uh, how, how tribes have to be uh, vigilant on coming together to achieve national uh, development Building, uh, yes. plan or agenda. Yes, please. Um, probably in these other countries, you go and find an American, a uh, true American knows two languages. They know English and Spanish. Okay. And, uh, and, and that alone probably has even helped them to, uh, to, 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 to be uh, uh, oriented into, into being streamlined to one vision as a country. And that has really helped them as a nation, much as it has diversity of people coming from all walks of life. Mm. So I believe this is something that really helps our country mm -hmm. uh, to grow on another level. Okay. Hello, thank you so much for uh, that great uh, program. And uh, we believe that with such programs, we will achieve much as a nation. Thank you so much, Isaac Sebachi J there from Lunguja for calling in and of course for watching. Now, our callers, you could still call in and join in our conversation as we try to look at the uh, concrete aspects of national views. Now, looking at challenges, mm. uh, Milton earlier before Isaac mm. called in, and are looking at one of the biggest challenges to national building is corruption. Huh. What do we do? We've been in this place before, we've been <laughs> stuck in this place, and we're worried <coughs> that we may get caught up. Corruption, corruption, corruption. What happens with a nation with corruption? You think you're moving ahead because maybe your brother has stolen something and probably has bought a new car. And you think you are developing. And say, the majority of the people up country, they are not getting public services. And so the, the few of you who talk too much, people are buying cars at the cost probably of when the cost. we are measuring GDP of a nation, we think the country is moving ahead. Mm. But I want to tell the nation, corruption is a virus that will not allow Uganda to move forward. No matter how much money we can inject in the systems, that money will remain in the hands of the few, while the voters, while m the mothers, the women, the, the, the young people, the farmers who feed the country are suffering up country. What do I mean here? I mean that for us to build a nation, we must make sure we do everything possible to get oh, united. That, yes, I did, let, let us just take this call and Milton briefly. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, please. Can you tell us your name yes, and why please, you're uh, calling? Thanks for the program. You're welcome. Can you tell us your name and yes. why you're calling from? Yes. Please tell us your name and why you're calling from. Uh, I am calling from Chendoja District. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm, I'm calling from Chendoja District. Okay. Yes, yes I'm calling from Chendoja District. Yes. And uh, really, um, um, Mr. Kassandi Rock and Mike. Okay. Hello. Uh, I am very I'm concur, I'm concur with the that gentleman. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. Uh, I am okay with that gentleman. Okay. All right. What, what actually is putting on, 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 on the paper is right. First of all, this government is full of corruption. Two, so, the corruption has started within the system. First of all, member of parliament that we voted, we used our bill and vote. They always dodge the parliament to be the parliament, always up to it. Now we have a new term that corruption can get with, can get with it in our country. Well, the ministers, the member of parliament, even they dodge the parliament, they don't even, they, they, they don't know what took them there. Really, this is, they have, they have completely get out of the what, of what, what, of what took them there. Okay. Well, thank you so much for calling there from uh, Wundi Wujo. And uh, it, he did. Yeah. And what his statement is, is that we lack, because of a lack, a lack shared vision, that's yes. why we see all these lacunas. Now, 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 Milton, I'll give you just a few minutes because unfortunately our time is running out. But let us just take this caller, my last hello? caller. Yes, hello. Uh, UBC? Yes, it is UBC. Yeah? Yes, please, you're live, UBC. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, can I give in the presentation? Please come again. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, please. Your, we can hear you. Yeah, I wanted to appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you, huh? thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much for watching and of course for calling in to be a part of our conversation. Yeah, now, Milton, I'll give you just in two minutes to, to wrap it up and uh, make our last remarks to our viewers because our time has run short. Yes. But I know we'll have more yeah. time and as a viewers, but let us just use a minute to... And um, um, I will conclude by giving the, the, the few blips on uh, the threats to nation building. Uh, of course, we have talked about the political system. Um, the other is corruption. And who fights corruption is not only his excellence, the president, but making sure you and me, uh, parents, I talk about parents, everything begins at home now. The government sh sh should be seen at government uh, at family level. So if you want to fight corruption, please sit down with your son and your daughter and your wife and start uh, kind of inculcating values in your home. Making sure you go to school and also take children to schools where they have integrated character education, character competency development, creativity development, entrepreneurship, all those kind of things. So that young people can now graduate with ethical culture and with capacity to actually uh, start their own jobs. So um, that is very key. Then the other one is insecurity. Insecurity, what do I mean here? Uh, when a nation is insecure, it has crimes, violence, all of these things we are, we are seeing in the continent, that country will never go forward. Okay. Because it is diverted from the key development priorities to always now focus on the, the tear gas, uh, thieves are here, they have robbed a bank. No, now it, it gets diverted and where it, it is should be focusing on road construction, it starts now dividing the limited resources towards investing in security. Okay, lastly, the, lastly. the last one is basically, of course, um, uh, negative. Of course, the politics of the time can be um, then lack of equity, democracy, and rule of law. Those are some of the things. Uh, of course, also international influence. Some of the international influencers who dictate on, on, on several um, uh, systems on the continent. My, my conclusion definitely will be simple. Uh, please, your viewers, um, let's love this country. This country is the only home we have. So if we destroy this country called Uganda, where else shall we be? So please, you and me, we have a responsibility to nurture moral and innovative leadership, to start thinking of a national vision. How do we integrate it in our families, in our workplaces, in our communities, in the church, in the mosque? But then it doesn't end there. We must make sure we have shared values.
the shared values, because I am talking about a cultural institution. How many meetings do Kabak of Uganda meet the Bunyoro, the king of Bunyoro, the king of, of, of Singapore, to share the perspective of their role in uniting Ugandans beyond tribes, beyond political parties? What is their role as the political parties also? I'm talking about Resigan and Museveni and uh, all these, uh, Abedi Buhanik. What, what are they doing in, in building negotiations, dialogue? To, to build a national vision and uh, implementing it together. Okay. So I thank Ugandans, please let's keep peace, let's keep security, let us love our country, let us invest in our children. Please, I love you and may God bless each one of you. Thank you so much, Milton Kambura, for your time and for those very, very uh, quite mouthful words. And of course, thank you so much our viewers for watching UBC and of course for keeping it with us here at Good Morning Uganda. As it is, we do come to you Monday to Friday, that is 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Now, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll be giving you a quote for the day, and Ruben later will give you the updates in sports. Good morning. Thanks.